At this point, we've basically added all of the functionality for our app. We can visit the URL of a given story, we can look at its comments, and we can go to different pages. So at this point, the next couple of videos will be some optional steps that we can take to turn this application into a progressive web app so it can work more performantly on mobile devices as well as run offline to a certain extent. So what is a progressive web app if you're not familiar with this idea? The idea of a progressive web app is that we can take our web application and deliver it to a mobile device like a phone in such a way that it behaves almost identical to a native application, one that you can download from the App Store, for example. And it includes features like being able to add the site to your home screen on your phone or your tablet, for example, as well as being able to run it offline to a certain extent. And in this first video, we're going to take care of this first part of being able to add this site to our device's home screen. And we do so with the help of a JSON file, file called the Web App Manifest. It basically tells our browser, the browser that the user is running our application on, it tells it how the app needs to be displayed. So we can add icons, a background color, we can make sure it's opened in a certain way when the user opens our site. And again, it'll behave pretty similar to a mobile app. So let's get started by opening Google or some search engine and searching for the web app manifest generator. There's a couple of open source tools that we can make use of in order to create our manifest.json file. And the first one will be this web app manifest generator result with the URL tomitm.github.io slash app manifest. So we'll click on this and all we'll need to do in order to fill out our manifest file is provide some information about our app. So first of all, the name of our app is Hacker Next. We'll provide a short name of Hacker Dash Next. So this will be shown when it's not possible in a mobile device to display the full name, the normal name. The start URL, the URL of our app that we want to be started by default, it'll be the home route. Our display, which needs to be standalone, Standalone will give our site an app-like experience, and it's also necessary in order to prompt the user to add our site to the home screen. Our theme color will be our safety orange, the hex code F60, and then we'll provide some icons. And we need to provide a couple of icons, which will be essential, first of all, for showing next to our title, and also they're used for things like splash screens and what the user sees by default when they open our application. So the path to the first URL will be from our static folder. Our icons will be served from the static folder. So it will be the relative path slash static slash icons slash icon and the dimensions will be 512 by 512. Now before we do anything else, let's find a 512 by 512 icon. We'll go to Google and we'll search for a Hacker News logo 512 by 512 and let's see if this one works. So I'll go with this one. So we'll make sure it has the dimensions 512 by 512 and we will save our image. We can put it wherever we want. I'll just put it on the desktop. We can give it whatever name. I'll just give it the name logo. It looks like it's a PNG file. This will be important to remember. So we'll save our logo. And we'll head back to the manifest generator. And we'll end this URL with the file type, in my case PNG. The size will be 512 by 512 for the first one, and then image slash PNG for the type. So now we can copy this URL. We're also going to include, as it suggests, a 192 by 192 PNG. Okay, and that's basically it. 
Now we can just grab all of the content from the automatically generated manifest.json file and we'll put it in our static folder. So we'll copy that and we'll add static. We'll create a manifest.json file and just paste all those contents in. And we'll head back to the generator and there's also some content in the head that we need to provide. So we'll add this using a custom document page like we did in the previous project. So we'll add that to our pages directory. And up at the top we'll need document as well as head, main, and next script from next slash document. We can immediately export this class, which we'll call my document. We'll extend the document class that we get. And in the return, we'll include some HTML tags. I'll set the lang attribute on it to en-us for me. And we'll add our head component. And then we can copy all the contents that were auto-generated we need to do a tiny bit of work with this though. We need to add the trailing forward slash for each of these tags so that they work with React. All right, and once that's done, we need to change the href for this link to our manifest.json file. So we're putting that link in the head. And this needs to be the path slash static slash manifest.json, which is exactly where we put it. And then after the head, we'll have our body, which will just include main and next script. And that's it. Now we need to generate these icons that we're including a link to in a lot of these link tags. So to create this 192 by 192 size, we'll head to another web app manifest generator. We can just head back to the results and go to app-manifest.firebaseapp.com. And here in this page, we are gonna generate our icon using our logo, the logo.png file that we saved somewhere on our computer. So we'll load that and then we'll click generate zip. It'll create a zip file. We're gonna click on the zip file that was created, app-images. Then when it opens, you should see, you should see within the images folder, we can ignore the manifest.json file, an icons folder, as well as a lot of differently sized icons. Now we only need the 512 and the 192 sizes. So we can delete, select and delete all the other ones. Then we can just open a new tab. I'll just open my finder tab and take the icons folder and navigate to static in hacker next and drag that entire folder inside it. So now in our code editor we should see our two icons and now all of these links should correctly reference an image to display. So with all that done we can save our files. So now to apply the contents of our document we'll just need to end our dev script and restart it. And once everything has been recompiled we should see this logo applied to our next to our title and in some browsers even for example if I use brave and we open our app we should see the tab color as the background color that we specified within our manifest file so with this manifest applied we're well on the way to having a progressive web app and it gives users of some browsers and on mobile devices a app-like experience.